Welcome back. We have covered a lot of ground in the last two lessons. So I thought that we might spend some more time exploring transposition through our previously encountered repertoire today. And we'll learn a new combination of primary chords that will turn into a blues piece at our next lesson. Let's run through a couple of our five-finger patterns, chords, and chord progressions to get our fingers and brain warmed up. Let's begin with the F major five-finger pattern and chords at our faster tempo, and we'll repeat it. One, two, three, four, one, two, and play. if we try our chord progression in F major. We'll play the tonic, subdominant, dominant, and then tonic again. And how about if we play each one twice in a pattern like you've been practicing? One, two, three, four. we have warmed up in F major, let's play one of the pieces that we've learned in the key of F. And this is actually a good practice tip. I like to warm up in the key of the piece that I'll be practicing so that I can familiarize myself with the notes of the scale, because within the piece I can expect these notes and it kind of trains my fingers about where they will need to be. It's a good opportunity to review the chords that I'll likely encounter in the harmony, too. How about if we run through your improvisation in F? I'll play an accompaniment that includes the chord progression. You can play both the chords and your melody, or you can just let me accompany you with the harmony while you focus on and play your melody. Take a moment to pull out your music book where you've notated your melody so that you can reference it as, we, as you play with me. Okay, so here we go. Let's try our improvisation, and remember that there's a repeat sign at the end. One, two, three, four. So, oh, how did it sound? I really wish that I could have heard each of your individual improvisations. I do know that every time I hear my students share these during our class time at the university, I am impressed with the level of creativity and commitment that they demonstrate in coming up with unique melodies. Now that we are warmed up with F major, let's review the key of C major. I'd like to go through the same warm-up routine. We'll play the major five-finger pattern with blocked chords twice. Then we'll play the tonic, subdominant, dominant, and tonic chord progression as you practiced it. You may do the chord progression with either the left or if you feel comfortable with both hands. Here we go. One, two, three, four. And now, we'll do the chord progression in C. We'll repeat each one twice. One, two, three, four. Subdominant. Dominant. One of the pieces that we've been learning in C major is Woodland Jaunt. 
Let's play that together one time using version 1 with the single left hand notes. This is the version that you practiced for today. One, two, three, four. Next, I'd like us to harmonize the woodland jaunt melody using chords from the C major primary chord progression. Based on what we learned during the improvisation activity at our last lesson, I'll bet that you can figure out which chords I will choose to harmonize each measure of this melody. Here are the left hand chords that I think work well. You'll see that in any given measure, most of the melody notes belong to the left hand chord. Notice also that any non-chord tones, which are not circled on this score, occur on weaker beats in the measure and not on the downbeat. When preparing your left hand, you can either read the notes on the staff or the Roman numerals below the bass clef staff. Let's try this version of Woodland Jaunt hands together slowly. One, two, three, four. Try that one more time. Remember to lift your left hand a little early to prepare for the chord changes and the leaps. Your goal is to play each chord precisely with the right hand note that occurs on the first beat of each measure. One, two, and play. Harmonizing woodland jaunt with chords in this manner is a tricky new technique. So why don't you keep working on it between now and our next lesson? We'll harmonize quite a few melodies throughout this course, so practicing this skill using woodland jaunt will prepare you for future harmonization examples that we'll encounter. Before moving on from woodland jaunt, however, I'd like to transpose it. We've talked about transposition in the past few lessons, but now we're going to transpose Woodland Jaunt into the key of F. We'll use version 2 with the chords in the left hand as we just played it. So please use that score as your reference. The easiest way to think about transposing this is to move your hands into the F major five finger pattern, and instead of reading the actual note names, we'll read the intervals. Remember that the right hand begins on the third scale degree. So in F major, that will be the third finger on A. Your left hand begins with the tonic chord. So that will be the F major chord in this key. Then you'll play the subdominant chord or the dominant chords as indicated by the Roman numerals below the bass clef staff. So even though the chord names will be different than notated on the original score, we'll do the tonic, subdominant, and dominant chords from our F major chord progression that you practiced for today's lesson. We'll try this several times. I'll play both hands each time so that you can hear the complete example. But first, I'll talk you through the right hand intervals as we play. So focus on the right hand the first time. Second, I'll focus on highlighting the left hand chords, so you can try the left hand on our second playing. During the third time, we'll try to play both hands together. As usual, feel free to challenge yourself to try both hands sooner, but if you run into trouble, drop one of the hands so you can focus on the other. So here we go, focusing on the right hand. Remember, the fourth finger should play B flat in this key. 
Focusing on your right hand. One, two, three, four. Up a third. Down a fourth. Up by step. Down a third. Up a third. Step. Down a fourth. Up by step. Down a third. 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 Next, we'll focus on the left hand chords. I encourage you to think about the bottom note of each chord or where the pinky should land, as this will help to ground you on the keyboard. One, two, here we go. F, B flat, C major, F, F, B flat, C. Okay, let's play it one more time. Just do what you can, but try both hands if you feel up to the challenge. One, two, and play. Congratulations! You just transposed an entire piece from the key of C to F major. Now, I know it probably wasn't perfect, so practice it for the next few days and try to be able to play it comfortably in the key of F major as well as in C major with both hands before our next lesson. I think it would be good to transpose another piece into the key of F. How about if we try something that we haven't looked at in a while? Let's play the Ode to Joy again. First, we'll do it in the key of C, as we learned it earlier. And because, and because we haven't played it in a while, let's put a repeat sign at the end and play it twice. It will probably be better the second time. One, two, three, four. Now, let's move our hands into the F major five-finger pattern. Like the woodland jaunt, this piece also begins on the third scale degree in the melody. The left hand is only playing tonic or dominant notes, not the entire chord. So in F, the tonic note will be F, and the dominant note will be C. Let's play it in F with the repeat. I'll say right hand intervals the first time through. One, two, and play. Step, step down, step up, step down, step down, step down. I know it has been a while since we've played the Ode to Joy together, but I wanted you to see that you are capable of transposing music from one key to another. You may certainly keep practicing the Ode to Joy in C, F, or any of the other major keys that we've been practicing. Let's do one more transposition. How about if we review when the saints, in the key of C, as you've been practicing it, one, two, three, four, rest. Now, 
This time, I'd like to try it in the key of G major. We should go through our warm-up in G major first, but let's just play the five-finger pattern and chords right now to familiarize ourselves with the notes that we'll be playing in this key. So here we are for G major. Five-finger pattern up and down and your chords. One, two, three, play. Now that we've warmed up, we should look at our original version of When the Saints more closely. Let's explore the left-hand chords first. You'll see that we had the outer notes of the tonic chord for several measures at the beginning, so you'll play a harmonic fifth in the new key of G, or a G and a D here. In measure 8, when we have to play the interval of a second, you'll play the top two notes or scale degrees 4 and 5 in your left hand, like so. Please play your left hand with me in the key of G right now. One, two, and play. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. Second. Rest, rest, fifth. Rest, rest, up a third, down by step. One, two, three, four. Let's do that hand one more time from measure six to the end, as there were several places where you could have gone wrong. So starting at measure six with the interval of a fifth. One, two, and play. Rest, rest. One, two. One, two. Rest, rest. Up a third. Down by step. Now, let's look at the right hand for the first eight measures only. Remember, here we begin on the tonic note, but immediately skip up to the B in the new key. Then we move by step twice before playing that pattern again. Let's just give it a try. The first eight measures only with the right hand. One, two, three, four, rest. Two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, hold. Down a third, down a third, down a step. Two, three, four, hold. Now, let's try it hands together. Since it is more complicated to play both hands at once, and there is more information to process, I'll play it a little slower. One, two, three, four, rest. How did that go? It likely wasn't perfect, but you have begun to transpose another piece. Please work on this in the new key of G for next time, and try to be able to play both hands comfortably before we meet again. Many of my students find that they need to work on the last four measures a good deal hands separately before finding success hands together. On the other hand, if you had mastered those measures in the original key, this passage may feel very similar to you, and you may be surprised at how easily you can play it. Just remember that everyone's experience of learning piano skills is different, so please be patient with yourself. I'd like to stay with G major for the next few minutes. 
We are going to need the three primary chords in G for a new piece that we'll learn at our next lesson. So, we'll need the tonic, G major, the subdominant, C major, and the dominant, D major. Remember, when playing a D major chord, we need to make sure that the middle finger is up on the black key, F sharp. If you've drilled your finger patterns, this will soon become automatic. Of course, we'll be playing the D major chord a lot, too, and I'll remind you about the F sharp, so don't fret if you forget it once in a while. However, when we play together, if your chord doesn't sound like mine, I'd recommend ensuring that your finger is on the sharp first, since this is the most common mistake. I'd like to make one more note about the F sharp in the key of G major. Since all Fs are sharp in the key of G, rather than indicating the accidental in front of every single F, which clutters the score, it is a common practice for us to simply put an F sharp on the top F line in the treble clef and on the F landmark line in the bass clef. These sharps can be found immediately after the clef signs, but before the time signature and they indicate the key of the piece. I'll discuss this more at our next lesson, but suffice it to say that in this example, the F sharp immediately following the clefs indicates that we are in the key of G major and that unless otherwise indicated, all Fs are sharp in this example. The following left-hand chord pattern incorporates the primary chords from the key of G but the pattern or progression of chords is slightly different from our warm-ups. Let's play to get this together once. One, two, three, four. Back to tonic. Though you are repeating the chords and constantly playing quarter notes, please remember to keep your hand and arm loose. In fact, you could even detach the notes slightly like so. Please practice this progression as it will become the foundation for a new piece in the blues style that we'll learn next time. Let's take a moment to shake our hands out or to do some shoulder shrugs. Just take a quick physical and mental break before we move on. Remember to take a deep breath. It's amazing how often we hold our breath or tense up when we are really concentrating and focusing on new material as we've been doing today. In our last few minutes, I'd like to work on the Kohler Melody in G, Opus 218, number 18. Let's just begin by playing together all the way through. One, two, three, four. There are a number of tricky elements here. Let's try it again. Try to notice any spots where your performance doesn't match mine. This will help you to identify places that might need a little extra practice before our next lesson. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Since improving during practice depends on how well you are assessing your playing, I'd like you to think about how well you did the following. After each question, I'll provide a suggestion or a practice tip that can improve the potential problem that we've identified. Were your right hand eighth notes steady and even? If not, slow down and try these measures slower until you master them. 
Did your left hand play precisely with the right hand? If not, be sure that you lift your left hand a little early in order to arrive at the downbeat on time. Was your right hand melody stronger than the left hand accompaniment? If not, pencil in a forte dynamic marking on your score to remind yourself to bring out the right hand. Was your right hand fairly smooth and connected without hesitations? We haven't talked about this much yet, but I would like you to try to connect these notes as much as possible. Remember to stay relaxed as you play, though. If you are hesitating, try practicing with a metronome at a slower tempo. In light of those questions, let's play the Kohler melody one last time. Try to accurately assess what you are doing well and what you can work on as we play. One, two, three, play. At the next lesson, we'll transpose this Kohler melody in G, so be sure to master it to the best of your ability before our next lesson. Well, we've covered a lot of ground today. Although we've reviewed some repertoire from previous lessons, we've actually transposed several of those pieces into different keys. I want to remind you that this is no small feat and a skill that is quite impressive, especially since we are only about a quarter of the way through our course. In fact, when I was young, transposition wasn't taught until much later, and I think that it was a shame because I didn't get to learn this important skill early enough in my training, and I missed out on opportunities to explore and get to know many of the musical keys better. So before next lesson, please practice the following. The five finger patterns and chords, a quarter note should equal 140. Your left hand chord progression in C, D, F, and G major. The woodland jaunt in C and F major. The ode to joy in C and F major. And when the saints go marching in, in C and G major. Also practice the left hand 12 bar G progression and the Kohler melody opus 218, number 18, in G and D major. Remember, you can review any parts of the lecture that need clarification and try to play along with me when possible. In the meantime, happy practicing and transposing. Thank mm -hmm. you.